The Jazz Wars Sonic line needs a little introduction. Throughout the years, it's been titled as one of, if not the greatest line of Sonic merchandise of all time. One aspect of the line that made it stand out was the sheer amount of characters that were included in it. Unlike previous Sonic sets, Jazz Wars made their set feel really complete. Well, for the figures at least. While the figures were the main focus of the line, the line also contained plushes. I often see these plushes overlooked, which makes sense. While the plushes were alright, it really lacked character diversity, which is a huge contrast to the figures. The plush line contains 7-inch plushes of Sonic, Shadow, Sonic the Werehog, Tails, Silver, and that's it. There was a series of classic plushes released later into the line, which did feel much more complete, but still, the modern plush lineup felt really lacking. However, this wasn't always going to be the case. Yes, Jazz Wars had a lot more planned for the 7-inch plush line. Plushes of Eggman, Knuckles, Big, and even a plush of Sonic with the Gauntlet and Caliburn from Sonic in the Black Knight were all prototyped and designed, but failed to be released. Even the classic plushes had a cancelled plush, Super Sonic, so there was a lot of plush work at Jazz Wars that never materialized. For the most part, these cancelled plushes remain shrouded in mystery, with their existence only verified by the occasional glimpse of them we got at Toy Fairs. Toy Fair 2010 was where the Knuckles, Big, and Eggman plushes were all first shown off. In in fact, Toy Fair 2010 was the only time we ever saw the Knuckles Bigger Eggman plushes. They were never shown off ever again, and to my knowledge, they were never listed on any sites or store catalogs, nor was any further explanation regarding them given. Until now. On the fateful day of April 3rd, 2017, I check eBay. I search Sonic plush, expecting nothing too special to show up. To my surprise, I see a listing with the now famous title of New Sonic the Hedgehog Big the Cat 7-inch plush toy doll gif. It's a listing from China. I get suspicious. But the second I look closer at the image, I quickly realize <gasps> it's him. Being listed for only $15.80, I check out within seconds. And after just a few short weeks, the Jazzwares Big the Cat plush prototype arrived. I cannot stress enough how much of an honor it is to actually own this plush. This plush has been unseen for nearly seven years. Besides that one appearance at Toy Fair in 2010, the plush never showed up again, and until now we never got a great look at it. This is the first ever full, in-depth, public video of this plush, and the fact that I have the opportunity to share it with you guys is absolutely mind-blowing. Before the plush was listed on eBay, for all I knew, it was gone. See, more often than not, prototypes are discarded and destroyed, because they're simply test items. They exist solely to test an item and make sure it's ready to be manufactured. Because of that, most companies don't see the importance of keeping them around, so most of the time they get destroyed. However, by whatever magic this big has attached to it, it survived. For seven years. And considering it was for sale from a Chinese seller whose items are mostly items taken from a factory, chances are this big was hanging out of the factory for seven long years. How this plush survived for that long, I'll never know. Maybe someone at the factory just really liked Big. Let's just hope they also liked Eggman, Knuckles, etc, of course. Well, we've waited seven years to see this plush, so let's take a look at him. Just gonna say it, this plush is leagues better than most of the plushes Jazz Wars actually released. While this may be because this was made as a prototype and not a mass-produced item, he still looks really, really good nonetheless. The plush captures all of Big's details near perfectly, or at least as perfectly as could be done on the budget Jazz Wars was under. Big's face, while not entirely accurate, looks pretty good with what the plush was going for. His eyes look kind of unsettling, but that may be because the embroidery on this eye isn't done correctly or is damaged. The white shine of the eye isn't fully there. Big's muzzle is very well shaped, and his mouth is fully defined. His nose is also made of embroidery. Just like the Jazz Wars Tails plush, Big has thin pieces of felt used for his cheek and chest tufts. His cheek tufts aren't symmetrical, but his chest tufts look perfect. Big's ears are great. They're very large, and the insides of them are fully patterned. They're very impressive looking. His head shape is spot on, and his back spikes are very well done too, with the two rows having the correct number of spikes and the spikes being the correct length. His body is naturally round, with his stomach fur being perfectly circular, and his arms are the correct length. His gloves are a separate piece, which like most Jazzware Sonic plushes aren't stuffed at all, which makes them look very flat, but his fingers are all detailed and his hand is well proportioned. Just like the other Jazzware Sonic plushes, Big is made mostly using a soft fabric. He also of course has all of his dark purple highlights all over his head and body. Here's one of the most interesting parts about this plush, Big's belt. I believe it's made of vinyl. The belt itself is great, with it being fully wrapped around his body, and it's also looped into a circular buckle, which is a separate layered piece, though it's made of the same material. The end of Big's belt here is cut. This is very odd. It doesn't look like it was a mistake either, the cut is way too clean to be one. So did someone willingly cut off the end of Big's belt? The one that was at Toy Fair, which may or may not be the one that I have, does have its full belt. So something must have happened to this Big. Very weird. 
The overall condition of the plush is very good, but he does have some dirt and damage here and there. This can be easily explained by it being in a factory for so long. Though, I mean, Big being somewhat used is much better than the alternative of him being ripped to shreds in a factory, so you know, I'll take it. You know what's pretty great? Big's tail. It does go somewhat sideways, which I think was the result of it being pressed on for a long time, but whatever, it still looks really good. The end of the tail comes to one centered spike, with felt pieces around it to represent the other spikes. Big's legs are short, and his sandals are top notch. Big's feet are made using the same material that stuff like the released plush's shoes were made of. It kinda looks weird when you notice that his legs are soft but his feet aren't, but it looks fine. His sandals are full of detail. They're made using the same material as his feet. The soles are a different color, the strap is there and has embroidery, and the sandals even have all eight buckles made of felt. The amount of detail that this plush has is absolutely insane, especially compared to the other plushes by Jazzwares. Big's pretty, well, big compared to the other 7-inch Jazzwares plushes. While he's still only 7 inches tall, he's overall much larger. Here he is compared to the Jazzwares Sonic plush. And here he is compared to other Jazzwares Sonic plushes. You know, this does give us a glimpse into what the Jazzwares line could have been if he was released. Oh well. Continuing with comparisons, here he is next to the GE Big, and here he is compared to the actually released Jazzwares Big item, the 4-inch Big figure, along with Froggy, of course. While the plush does lack a paper tag, which makes sense given that it's a prototype, the plush does actually have a fully detailed touch tag, and it's very interesting. Now, I know what you're all thinking, but no. This plush has no relations to the Sonic products being currently released by Tomy. Back when the Jazzwares line was first starting out, Tomy UK, who you can see here, distributed the figures and plushes to the UK, and it seems for whatever reason this plush was made using that touch tag. Maybe the factory only had these touch tags on them, or maybe he was manufactured where the UK releases of the plushes were made? That's all just speculation, but it is interesting to think about. And that's big! I'm so saddened that this plush never actually came out. If Jazzwares could have released this plush for the price point of their other plushes, this along with the other cancelled plushes could have improved the line so, so much. So, why wasn't this plush released? Well, there could have been a lot of reasons behind its cancellation. My theory was that the plush was actually too well made to be released, or at least too complex to be efficiently produced by Jazzwares under their price point at the time. The Jazzwares Sonic plushes usually ran for around $10 when they first came out, so this would have been super complex for a $10 plush. Big is a pretty thick Sonic character all things considered, so he requires more materials to be accurately made. He also has tons of detail. Embroidered eyes, large ears, back spikes, his tail which is itself has spikes coming off of it, not to mention his belt and sandals. If this was released at the price point of the other plushes, it would have been a steal. Another potential deciding factor behind the plush's cancellation is that, well, it's Big the Cat. Remember, this plush was made in 2010 or earlier. That was long before the age of Big the Cat being the meme icon that he is today. Nowadays, if a company released a big plush, not only would actual fans buy it, but you know full well tons of them would be sold ironically. Back at the time of this plush's creation, not many people liked Big, so this plush probably Probably wouldn't have been all that successful. I'm sure tons of you watching this video are thinking, oh no, I would have bought the plush if it came out, but think to yourself, if this plush did come out, would you have bought it? Would you have bought a big plush back in 2010? Would you have? Releasing it alone would have been a pretty big risk, and I imagine Jazzwares didn't want Biggs clogging up store shelves, as unfortunate as that may be. But wait, Big not being released due to him being too complex or unpopular doesn't explain why the other cancelled plushes weren't released. For instance, why wasn't Knuckles released? There had to be more to it, right? Well, in my time researching the Jazzwares Sonic line, I contacted a very influential member of the Jazzwares Sonic team, Joe Amaro, who essentially ran the line. I asked him if he had any insight on just what happened to these guys. He said what most likely happened was that they were simply not approved by Sega. Actually, looking back at the articles released regarding Jazzwares Sonic at Toy Fair 2010, some do directly state that the plushes shown off were not yet approved by Sega, and because of that, people weren't allowed to take good pictures of them. And that's the reason why information on these cancelled plushes is just so scarce. I'd like to know Sega's thought process behind approving the plushes. Like, why did Silver get approved but Knuckles didn't? Did the Knuckles plush just look that bad? Surely quality wasn't the only thing taken into consideration as Big looks so good, maybe Knuckles looks really good as well. Of course we don't know that yet. In fact, we've only seen exactly this much of the Knuckles plush. I really want to see what his face looks like, hopefully we'll see that someday. The thing that really gets me is that even though we now fully know what the big plush was like, the rest of the cancel plushes for the most part are still undocumented. And the sad part is, there's actually a chance they are gone for good. If these plushes weren't approved by Sega, what reason would Jazzwares have to keep them around? As sad of a thought as it is, these are just products to the company. Throwing away a cancelled, rejected, never-to-be-produced plush prototype is something any company would do. 
I'm sure Jaspers took pictures of the plushes. There has to be at least some documentation of the plushes out there, but until those come to light, who knows? Then again, if the big plush could survive, who's to say that the Knuckles, Eggman, and all of the other cancel plushes couldn't have? Maybe even some unproduced figure prototypes could have survived too? I guess only time will tell. It's pretty cool looking back. The first Sonic plushes I ever got was a set of Jazzwares plushes. I got Sonic, Shadow, and the Werehog back in summer of 2010, and now, seven years later, I have an unreleased prototype from the line that got me into collecting. An aspect of my life that has given me so many opportunities, has allowed me to meet so many amazing people, and have experiences I never would have otherwise. Really incredible when I think about it. I want to end this video by saying thanks to whoever found this plush, the seller who sold it on eBay, the people I contacted while researching for this video, and everyone involved in making this guy right here possible. I would have never even dreamt of owning a Jazzwares prototype. Heck, I never even thought any of these would see the light of day. And honestly, having this big is a pretty surreal feeling. Now we just need to hope that the rest of the cancelled plushes are still out there somewhere. As someone who's super into documenting the history of these merchandise lines, it makes me so happy to own this big and to be able to share him with you guys. While the fate of the other cancelled plushes is still uncertain, it's good to know that at least big is still here, and I'll be sure to preserve him for years to come.